I'm David Meitzler with Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Ypsilanti. I thought what we would do today is a special short little tour to see something special. We're going to go take a look at some organ pipes. And we're going to do that uh, here at the church. And it's a kind of a special thing that many people don't really ever get to see because it's a, it's a special place. And in order to do that first, what we're going to do is we're going to change into our organ shoes. You may not know that organists wear special shoes. There's a Mr. Rogers scene where he does that. Yeah. This is uh, not that. But I'm going to put on special shoes. The reason why we have special shoes is because the pedal boards of organs are made of wood pieces, and we need shoes which are not outdoor shoes. These are shoes with leather soles all the way, and that helps the feet slide over the organ pedals, the pedal board, much more easily. Because you can imagine with a rubber sole that they would kind of, you know, they'd have a lot of traction, and you don't want traction. Now, some organists wear socks when they play, but you didn't hear that from me. But organ shoes are not uh, too hard to find. Uh, you can often find them in uh, stores that sell uh, dance equipment. I guess you could say organists sometimes have to dance. All right, so. We have the shoes. Now, we're going to need some additional supplies. We're going to need some additional light. We're going to need some masking tape. And we're going to need some ribbon. I'm going to put all this in the bag. And now, I'm going to grab all this stuff and then we're going to go to the pipe organ loft here at Emmanuel. All right, now this is a very exclusive kind of uh, tour that we're going to go on, so be ready for it. All right, in order to do this, I had to grab a mobile camera, so we're going to come along through here, move around stuff. Okay, come with me here. Right this way. We're going to go in here. Now, Here's an issue. We have to climb a ladder. You see that ladder there? Look over there. That's right, that's where we're going. Okay, now this is gonna be tricky. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna climb up with you. All right, here we go. Now, you're probably thinking, well, David, it's dark. How do you know where you're going? Well, organists have sonar hearing, like bats. And we can often tell where we are without necessarily being able to see stuff, especially when it's a pipe organ loft or our basement. So we're gonna just get over here. Here, all right, and there we go. I found the light switch. Okay, so, okay, oops, sorry, those are the chimes. Well, here we are in the pipe organ loft at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Now, there's not a lot of room up here, and as far as lofts go, this isn't the biggest loft in the in the in the uh, in the city, right? But it's a good sized loft because there are a lot of pipes here. Now let's go to the big pipes. Actually, you know what, let's look around first. If you look, you see a whole bunch of pipes here. And there's also some speakers. And the speakers are for another part of the organ, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, now let's go over here. Don't ever come up here unless you're with me. I have some ribbon and some masking tape. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to put some ribbon on the pipes so that you can see where the air is coming out. Now let's take a look at these pipes up close. And what we see here, each one of these is a pipe. And it's made of wood. These are hand assembled. They are carefully tuned. Each one is tuned to one specific pitch. Every single pipe you see here, all of these pipes made of both wood and metal, each one only makes a single pitch and it only plays at a single volume. When a particular rank of pipes is selected, that is turned on, the organist will press a key and that key will open up a switch or a valve at the base of the pipe. You can't see the mechanism under here but it's behind the wood. Opens up the valve air flows into the pipe through here and comes out here. This is where most of the sound is made in this particular kind of pipe. If you look all the way at the top of this pipe and you look up there, it's a little hard to see, but there's a little stopper in there. Here's what the stopper looks like if you take a closer look at a smaller pipe. It kind of looks like that. And this stopper provides um, some characteristics to the sound and it also is what's used to help tune the pipe along with the length of the pipe. But most of the air for these pipes comes out here and that's our sound and then we hear that. Now if you look back behind here, you, this is, these are all pipes here, but if you look back behind here there are more pipes. Here's a pipe there's a pipe, there's a pipe, and there's a pipe. And in fact, this one here is the biggest one we have. And that pipe, if you look, goes all the way, all the way up to the ceiling. And that large pipe gives us our deep sounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some ribbon onto the pipe take some ribbon here take a little piece of ribbon here let's take about I don't know three or four pieces of ribbon one two three, maybe one or two more, four, and I think we can get one more, one more piece of ribbon here. Oops, now I've dropped my ribbons. I've dropped my ribbons, everybody. Okay. Remember when the organist dropped his ribbons? All right, now look what we're going to do. We're going to take a little piece of tape. tape on the ribbon and the ribbon with <laughs> the tape onto the pipe. Let's see if this will work. I've never done this before. This might not work. Let's try it like this. There we go. I think we're going to have it down there. This might not work. It's exciting, isn't it? Don't you wonder, what if it doesn't work? Will there be an explosion? I don't know. Let's see, let's try this right here. Now you have to be very careful when you're touching organ pipes. You don't want the oil from your fingers to get on the metal parts of the pipes. And frankly, you don't really want the oil of your fingers to get on any other part of the pipe. But I'm being very careful here not to do anything that could cause any damage to these pipes. All right, we're going to try one or two more. All right, how about this little ribbon project we're doing? All right. Now let's take a look at our handiwork. Now, 
We got this one. We got this one. Got a one or two or three there. All right, now I'm going to go play the organ pipes. We're back here at the organ console. Now, I'm on the organ bench with my organ shoes on. And if you look here, there's, there's a selection, selection of pipes, pipes to use. And I'm, I'm going to select this one, one right here. here. This, this is, is called the Subas. That light means that that pipe rank is on, and that's the pipe rank that we were looking at. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the pedal to make those pipes sound. So let's take a look down here. See where my foot is? All right, here we go. So those are all deep pipes. Those are low pitches and low frequencies. The amazing thing about this pipe organ, as all pipe organs basically are, is that they have a wide tonal range. They can play all sorts of different kinds of sounds and also a wide range of pitches. So from the very low to the very high, more so than any other instrument in the world. And that's why organs are so spectacular. That's why they're so special. And that's one of the reasons why they have been around for thousands of years. It's true. Pipe organs have been found in archaeological digs. Now, they didn't look like this. They looked much more simpler. They were called water organs, in fact. And they used water to provide the air pressure and the changes in the air to get the air through the pipes. All right. so. We just demonstrated those low pitches. Now, one of the questions you may ask is, would we ever use those low pipes? When are they ever used? Well, they're used as part of a complement of pipes in order to provide a rich tonal sound uh, to the music that we listen to or to which we sing. So if I just press those pedals like this, By themselves, it's not something you would necessarily listen to very often. But if I play some other pipes, for instance, let's just say this pipe. That's with the pipes. Now, if I don't have the pipes sounding, it's just with the keyboard. And again with the pipe. So those low pitches really provide a lot of extra foundation to the sounds that we hear and also the sounds uh, that we use when we're singing it and the melodies and the songs that we do. And it's much like if you think about a four-part choir, bass, tenor, uh, alto, and soprano, or bass one, bass two, tenor one, tenor two, um, or some mix of those, having a full range of voices and pitches from the high and low help to add to the color and the richness of the music that you're listening to or you're singing with.
have those large pipes that play the very um, deep notes, but we also in an organ have very high pitched pipes. So our highest pitch sounds sound something like this. I don't know if you can hear that on this recording, but those are some of the highest pitches that the organ can play. There's no other instrument in the world that can really play both the such low notes and such high notes and so easily and so quickly and in a musical way. You can have a computer do it, but that's another discussion. Okay, so that is a demonstration of some of our pipes here at Emanuel Lutheran Church. And another time in another video, we'll take a look at some other aspects of the organ and learn about it. I hope you enjoyed our little tour today, our special tour, and um, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.